Hi, everyone. And um, thank you so much for joining this little session on finding purpose within your career. Um, so I'm Eloise and sorry if you've seen me many, many times today because I've been hosting other sessions. So I apologize if you're already sick of me jumping into the side and saying, are there any questions? Uh, but I'm back again for this final session. And this is gonna be a really relaxed session. So you can feel free to write any comments or thoughts or questions you have in the chat as we go. And the purpose of this session is to really explore the idea of purpose within careers. So this is the idea of maybe having like a driving force or like a real mission behind the work that you do in the world. And I wanna start off by saying, I'll tell you a bit about myself in a second. But before that, I wanna just say, you know, I don't really believe in like a singular answer to any of these questions. So I don't think this session will help you find a purpose that you're gonna have for life. Um, I don't think anyone else can help you find or tell you what your purpose is. I see purpose as more like an evolving concept that just accompanies you throughout life and steers you in the right direction. And I think, you know, if you have a singular purpose, that's great. But I think for lots of us, me included, we're just looking for elements of purpose or a sense of purpose in different places. And so what we're gonna to do today is give you some tools and techniques and little um, exercises that you can do by yourself. You can do them with me in the session or you can just like make a note and do them in your own time. Um, and these just really help you get a sense of like what you care about, what you're interested in, and then you can apply that to your own career journey. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And just a little bit about me before we go. So I'm Eloise and I am now um, a therapist, a writer. I have a book, it's called The Purpose Handbook. <laughs> Spoiler alert, and so I'm very much focused on purpose. Um, I have a new book out in January as well. Uh, that one's more about like well-being and stuff like that. So um, before that though, in another lifetime, I was a corporate lawyer. So if any, any of you are thinking of going into corporate law or you're doing law at uni or you're going through application schemes, feel free to ask me questions about corporate law because <laughs> I am happy to answer them as well if you want. Um, so yeah, I did that for a while and now I'm doing this. So let's get started. And yeah, feel free to type anything in the chat. I'll just keep an eye on it. Um, oh, the session will be recorded. And so you'll be able to watch it back if you want. I do normally send the slides to um, Career Map, so maybe they'll send the slides out. Or if you want the slides, you can like reach out to me on Instagram or LinkedIn or something and I'll give them to you there. Cool, all right. So um, this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about what purpose is, why it's valuable. Then we'll do practical exercises. These are my favorite bits because I feel like when you're talking about finding your purpose, it can get a little bit like, well, what does that even mean? Like, it's just a concept. It seems so kind of big and it's hard to grasp. So I love these little exercises that help you to actually figure out like, what does it look like if you wrote it down on paper kind of thing. So if you actually have a notebook with you, like that would be really helpful, pen and paper, or just your notes app on your phone will also be great. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about your career purpose and how it all relates to the world of work. All right. Um, okay, so these are just some basic ways that purpose can be helpful. I'm sure that you already know why having a sense of purpose can be really helpful. And I'm sure you've already felt it some places in your life where you feel a bit more connected to a hobby, a subject, a relationship, a like, I don't know, anything you do, a part-time job, where you find these little senses of purpose, you have some kind of fulfillment. So I'm sure you've already know this stuff, but uh, for the avoidance of doubt, um, these are a couple of reasons that purpose is really practically useful in the world. So number one, it kind of acts as this compass. It orientates you in the direction that you want to head in. And like I said at the beginning, I don't really think purpose is a final answer. I don't think you're, I think very, very few people are going to write down a single sentence that defines their purpose and then just live that the whole of their life. Some people might, and that's like amazing if that's if that's the path for you. For me, I definitely, you know, struggled and like looked around a lot and I'm still kind of working it out myself, but it becomes more of a compass. So it's kind of orientating you like not that direction, but this direction, that's the general way you're headed, that kind of thing. Similar to that is the sense of purpose being like a guiding force in your life. So similar to a compass, but a guide is more like, it's there if you need to fall back on something, like you know what your values are, you know what you care about, you know where you wanna put your energy. And then when life and your career gets incredibly stressful, which it probably will at some point, unless you're extremely fortunate, um, then you have these things to fall back on. Because even if the world is like really tough and there are so many challenges, you always know, okay, I'm doing the right thing because I'm doing what is aligned with my purpose, or I'm not doing what is aligned with my purpose, so now I'll go the other way kind of thing. 
And then the final thing in this list is grit. And this is basically a word that's, well, there is a book called Grit by someone called Angela Duckworth, I think, which maybe some of you guys have seen, um, which is all about the concept of grit being like fierce determination, like this is real resilience that helps you succeed in the world. And she talks about in this book, purpose being an element of some of these people's sense of grit. So like I was saying with the challenges of life, <laughs> when life gets really hard, one thing that can give you a really strong sense of like, I'm just gonna keep going, is this internal sense of purpose that you can find for yourself. So that's why it might be of use to you. <laughs> All right, and these are the things we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna start with purpose, we'll start nice and broad. Then we'll come into like a mission and you'll have your chance to write your own mission statement. And I'll even give you some tips for like job applications, interviews, and how you can use these ideas of like mission and purpose when it comes to like actually getting a job. And then finally, we'll talk about passion. I actually do have a couple of extra things that we'll see if we have time. I don't know, it's Monday, it's Monday evening, so I'm not going to keep you here forever, but I do have a couple extra things, so. All right, so this is, I use a lot of definitions, by the way, because I went to law school, so it's like ingrained in my brain to use a definition. Um, the definition of purpose is the intention, aim, or function of something, the thing that something is supposed to achieve. So it's like all of the stuff that you're doing, all of the stuff you're working towards is supposed to achieve your purpose theoretically. So that's just a working definition. And the first thing we're going to do is have a little play around with what I would call a purpose statement or like a purpose brainstorm or like some purpose focused phrases. So you can do this on your own or you can write it in the chat if you want. Um, what comes to mind, like what sentence, what words, like what elements of your life come to mind if I asked you like, what is your purpose or where do you find purpose? Like I can tell you for me, I find it in teaching, in talking to people. I find it in like writing material that I think is gonna be helpful for other people. Um, on a more personal level, I find it in like relationships where I'm like helping someone. So maybe if I'm like giving back and like volunteering or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'll give you guys a second. And um, yeah, John just said from family and friends. Yeah, I think that's a really, really um, common and like a really good place to find purposes like in your relationships with other people. Sports, definitely another like this team stuff. You know, being with other people comes up a lot in these themes. So like working together with other people to achieve a goal. So sports, music. Yeah, music is a beautiful one actually because it's kind of outside of all of that, like working with other people and it's just about your creative purpose. Family. Yeah, love that. Um, so yeah, like if you have a piece of paper, if you have and your app on your phone or anything, your notes app, <laughs> uh, you can just write down what comes to mind, like even big words or big phrases. Maybe you can think back to the last time in your life that you really felt like connected, that you felt like you had a mission or a purpose. <laughs> and then just think like, what was it about those times? Pets. Oh, that's a lovely one. Oh my God. I want a puppy so bad. I'm not allowed to have one in this flat. I'm just like so sad about it every day. Um, all right, while you're thinking, I am going to just go through a little detail about these ideas. So these are the questions that I get asked a lot, like hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, oh, Ellie just said walking. I love that. Yeah, like um, a real meditate, meditative walking, like with a path, like finding purpose. Yeah, I love that. Um, all right, so people ask me, should I have one singular purpose or many smaller purposes? Um, as I was saying at the beginning, I really don't think there is a right or a wrong answer to any of these questions. Like, ultimately, this is just your life and you have to figure out what you want to do with it, what, how you want to spend your time, what feels good to you, what feels like it's not worth your time, what, you know, what makes you bored, what makes you restless, what makes you engaged, that kind of stuff. So if you have one singular purpose, maybe like for John, it could be music, for example, it's like your singular purpose. Maybe that is the path for you and that's great. Um, however, if you have lots of different purposes, maybe you find a little sense of purpose in your work, but mostly you find it with your friends and your family or your partner, or you find it out in nature or something like that, but it's kind of all like in pieces. I wouldn't worry about that either. The intention is just to figure out what it is and then bring more of that into your life. So there's no right or wrong answer, I don't think. And then when it comes to depth, some people say, should purpose be like something you're going to have for your entire life? Like I sit down now and think, OK, my life's purpose is whatever. Or should it be like my purpose for the next six months is to get a job or something like that? Um, again, I don't think there are any real right or wrong answers. 
Having said that, um, there is a slightly different concept that captures these like shorter term projects. And that's the idea of having a mission statement, which is what we're gonna talk about next. So if you're thinking like, should it be long or short? It tends to be a little bit like longer horizons. So you might think my purpose for the next like five years or like my purpose while I'm at uni, my purpose while I'm a graduate, something like that. Think of it more like a extended period of time. Then you can break it down into missions and goals and stuff like that. Cool. So yeah, again, you can like screenshot or um, if you're on your phone or we'll get the slides to you afterwards if you want to come back to any of this. Okay. Oh yeah, I said this like a million times already. It's okay not to have the perfect answer or in fact any answer. And I really think these topics sometimes just seem so A, confusing, B, intimidating and C, sometimes quite boring as well. But like for me, I think purpose is really a journey for you to find what makes you interested in life. And so it's actually one of the most exciting pieces of work that you can do with yourself, <laughs> self-development, as it were. All right, so we're gonna go on to mission. And this is kind of related to purpose, but like I said, it has a bit of a shorter time horizon. So a mission is an important goal accompanied by a strong conviction. And on the next slide, this is a question for you. Again, you can type it in the chat if you want. Um, think of a couple of people that come to mind who have a strong mission. So these could be like celebrities that have a strong mission. Like people often think of someone like David Attenborough in the UK or like, I don't know, a prime minister, maybe not our current UK prime minister, but I don't know, that's your interpretation. Um, like a real strong, a singular kind of mission that they pursued for their entire life. So the prime minister is quite a good example because when you take that office, you do sort of assume a mission, like a real strong mission to do a specific thing. Uh, but that could also be like celebrities or people that you know, like I don't know if you know any anyone in your life who has like a really strong mission, um, but you can drop it in the chat if any names come to mind for you. And in the meantime, I am gonna show you this. Um, health professionals, yeah, footballers, yeah, definitely. Footballers is an interesting one that comes back to that sport idea of like having a really firm, I think sports are very like mission orientated. Charity workers, definitely. Health professionals, parents, parents, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Maybe pet parents as well, <laughs> a bit of a different mission. Um, all right, so these are some people that kind of came to my mind, celebrities or like, not celebrities, but public figures. Um, so you've got Stephen Hawking, who again, I guess you'd say his mission was like, you know, to explore the universe or to advance like um, awareness of physics or yeah, maybe to improve like scientific communication between um, scientists and like the general public. He did a lot of work in that. Um, Martin Luther King and uh, Greta <laughs> Thunberg, um, who's doing like, you know, work on really big issues like sustainability or um, civil rights, something like that, where you're really fighting for a specific cause and you're just known for doing that. Um, so those are some examples. Um, okay, so here, if you wanted to, here is how to craft a mission statement. So you're gonna grab a piece of paper um, or your notes app if you want, or you can just screenshot this and memorize it in your head. The first thing you do is figure out your main goal. So like, what do you wanna achieve? And like I said, with mission statements, these tend to be a little bit like shorter time horizons. Um, so this could be something within like the next six months, maybe it's getting a job, maybe it's graduating uni, maybe it's sitting your finals or like wherever you are in your, yeah, where are we? Oh, we're kind of like at the beginning of the year. So maybe it's like sitting whatever exams come at the end of December, um, something like that, or just even getting through the next academic term. This is a bit more job orientated, this example, but it doesn't have to be. Um, note down how you want to achieve the goal like what kind of person do you want to become as you're achieving the goal um this sounds a bit like uh philosophical but it's actually really practically useful because um you know when we achieve a goal the most important thing or the most useful thing that comes out of that process is like how we develop along the way like once you get the goal that's great like if you get a job perfect but that can only make you so fulfilled to a point and then it's kind of like it's also about you and your personality and like who you've become as you've achieved that goal. And if you end up achieving a goal that makes you into someone you don't particularly wanna be, um, it's a little bit counterintuitive. So this is a really important step where you just figure out like what kind of qualities do I wanna develop as I'm on my way to this goal? And I'll give you some examples of those in a second. Final step is give yourself a rough timeline for achievement. So this again, is like that short 
short uh, time horizon that you've got to think like, oh, I want to do this in the next couple months. So here is an example. Um, this is a career example. Um, say your main goal was like promotion to the next tier of leadership. And you're going to do it by growing and developing your personal brand as someone who excels at your role. Um, and your time estimate is six months for that. And then what you do with those three steps is you kind of squish them all together and make like one statement. So this is your mission statement. And you just write at the top of the page, mission statement or my, my mission statement. Um, and then it normally starts with the word to. So my mission is to blah, blah, blah. Um, and you kind of do the first two little segments in that first bit of the sentence. Um, and then you add in your time as well. So for, for this example, to obtain career promotion over the next six months using an enhanced personal brand and a reputation for excellence, <laughs> which you don't have to write it in that language, <laughs> but you could if you wanted to. So those little bits where you say like, um, you want to enhance your personal brand, like you want to enhance your reputation. Those are kind of the bits that are happening on the way to the goal. Like the goal is promotion, but on the way you're going to do this and that, and you're going to become this kind of person. That's how that all fits together. Um, do we have another slide on this? Okay, let's just go back for one sec. So let me tell you um, a little career hack that I think is quite helpful when it comes to applying for jobs or like doing application centers and stuff like that. This is the idea of looking at a company's mission statement because you might already um, sort of remember that companies sometimes parade around their mission statements as like statements of what that company wants to achieve. So say a really purpose-driven statement is like Patagonia, <laughs> um, who have just like given the company back to the environment essentially or put it into trust. Um, a company like that is often associated with a really strong mission. Having said that, like most companies will have mission statements even if you don't know what they are or even if you wouldn't really associate that company with having a mission. Like I don't actually know what this, this company's mission statement is, but I'm sure like McDonald's has one <laughs> or, you know, like, um, yeah, like any brand or any big company, they normally have one just to like unify everyone underneath the shared goal. Um, so when you're applying for a job, if you're applying to a big company, one thing you can do is look up their mission statement. It's normally online um, or their values, you know, corporate values, stuff like that, what we care about. And then subtly and carefully align that with your own uh, passions like mission purpose that kind of thing so when you write your application or you write your cover letter you say you know I understand this is what the company is doing and this is reflected in my life because of this reason and then you kind of align yourself under the mission and you can like set yourself apart from other people who didn't even think about mission and purpose just kind of thought about like a job so yeah tying yourself into a greater ideal is really helpful um, but I would keep your own mission statement a little separate from whatever company you're working for so say you're working for amazon and they have their own mission statement um which is i think to be like the most customer centric uh company on the planet i think that's amazon's and um, so say that's theirs but you're also going to have your own so even if you feel like yeah you're aligned with like real customer orientated work you also want to keep something for yourself that's just like this is who i am and like the thing i want to achieve um the uh, people ask me like can I have multiple mission statements at once and I think yeah if that works for you like definitely try not to get overwhelmed with like if you have 10 mission statements you might feel a bit too mission driven um but yeah you can definitely have a few at once um you can work on one for like personal stuff one for work stuff one for health and fitness whatever you're up to in your life all right let me just answer a few questions um do I think the pandemic and lockdown has changed how people answer these questions? Absolutely. And I think actually there was a lot of research um, that came out of the pandemic that said people were really searching for these ideas of purpose and mission a lot more. And I can tell you, like I left my corporate job during the pandemic. And one of the reasons was because when I was just sat at home on my own, like on my laptop doing my like work, um, I felt really disconnected from any greater sense of mission and purpose. And I had actually felt that a little bit more in the office because, you know, you're around people, everyone's working for the same goals that like you're working within big teams. Um, and I sort of lost that during the pandemic a bit. And I think a lot of other young, I'm not that young, but like other young-ish people um, felt the same. And so, yeah, I think these, the pandemic and lockdown have really like shifted our worldview to be like, what do you care about? Like we have limited time here and the world can change overnight. So like, what is it that you're going to do with your time, <laughs> your wild and precious life? <laughs> That's a quote <laughs> from a poem. Um, all right. Did I have any role models to help find career purpose? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think probably not people that I knew so much as like 
people that I'd read about or, you know, people that whose books I was reading. So one person, I don't know if you have ever read the book Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. He was someone I was really influenced by, like this idea that purpose can actually be a fundamental part of being well and being like a thriving human being. That was his theory that purpose is like a, you know, a drive within or like a will within each of us. Um, and that we, you know, that we follow that instinctively. Um, so, yeah books and things <laughs> were my role models. And how old was I when I found my purpose? I think I'm probably still discovering it, but I'm definitely a lot closer now um, in my thirties than I was like um, at 18 or 21 or any other age really. So I think I'm getting there slowly. Let's just give it a couple more decades. <laughs> All right. So passion. Um, passion is an intense desire or enthusiasm for something. I'm sure you all know what your passions are, but these are really helpful to give you an insight into what you care about, which really sounds like a question you shouldn't have to think about. It sounds like, well, obviously I know what I care about. <laughs> like, um, why, how would I not know? But I mean, if you're anything like me, sometimes I think I actually don't know, like, or I can't remember what I'm, pa like, it's hard to stay in touch with everything that you're passionate about or that you really care about. And sometimes you can feel a bit like, oh, I don't really care about anything, <laughs> which isn't true. I don't think for most people, I think if you really got like, if you kind of drilled it down, you would find things that you really care about. So that is the purpose of this exercise. Um, so let me, that didn't work. Okay, these are some questions to capture your passions. And you can screenshot these, make a note of them. You can put your answers in the chat, whatever you feel like doing. Um, you can ask yourself, maybe ask like friends or family as well. These are good questions to just like get to know yourself and other people. Um, what do you love to do? Uh, what are you doing when you feel most in flow? That's that idea of like losing sense of time where you're really just so immersed in doing one thing, maybe sports or music or something like that, or painting or even like um, talking to another person where you just lose sense of time and you're like really in the flow of like whatever's going on. Um, if you had unlimited money, what would you do tomorrow? I remember someone asked me like, when I was working in law, if you had unlimited money overnight, would you come to work tomorrow? <laughs> and I thought that was quite an interesting question, which I think I imagine a lot of people would not go to work the next day. Uh, but some people would, you know, even within corporate law, there were lots of people who were genuinely passionate about doing that career. And I think that's what you want to find is like a career where you're just like, you know, you would do it regardless of the money. Can you be passionate about due process? Yeah. Do you mean like rights and like, um, rights and responsibilities and standards. I think you definitely can be passionate about that if that's what you mean. Um, I'm pretty sure you can be passionate about most things. So I'm gonna say yes, <laughs> but if I misunderstood, let me know what you mean. A law, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can be, lots of people are as well. You know, human rights lawyers, really passionate about like, this is the way justice should be done and like, let's fight for it. Um, I was a corporate lawyer, so unfortunately I wasn't really on that side. But yeah, like doing a law degree, you know, you learn about these things. Um, what was your first career ambition? This is interesting because I think it tells you a lot about, you know, the consistencies that you've had over the years. And even if your first career ambition was to be like a firefighter or an astronaut or um, I don't know, like a princess or something. It probably tells you a little bit about yourself and what you valued at that age and what you still value from then compared to now. So, you know, if you wanted to be like a Superman, not a Superman, if you wanted to be Superman, um, then like you would value maybe power, authority, protecting people, like, you know, having responsibilities, something like that. So it's an interesting question. Um, what is the highlight of your week? That's a more practical question, like what do you actually really enjoy doing in your daily week? Um, and if there isn't anything this week, especially because it's only Monday afternoon, um, think about like the last month or something. Um, all right, we're gonna go on. Those were the three main things, but yeah, if you have extra questions, put them in the chat. We're probably not gonna go for the full hour, but like I will leave time for questions as well afterwards. And this is a tool that I wanted to show you, um, which you may have seen before. I, my, I feel like my face is like blocking the thing. Here we go. Um, called your Akigai. Akigai is a Japanese term. It means like what it translates roughly is like getting up in the morning, like your reason for being. Um, and this is a nice tool to help you figure out, um, you know, what actually is it that you want to do with your time? And the way you create this is you draw four overlapping circles and you can draw with one of those like, 
one of those things called where you like put your pencil in the thing and like circle around. It's been a while since I did maths GCSE, but um, a compass. <laughs> um, or you can like draw around a cup. <laughs> um, but you're going to draw these like four overlapping circles. And the idea is in the middle of that circle is where your key guy lies. So your kind of reason for being or your reason for getting up in the morning. Um, so you start at the top with the thing you love to do. That's kind of drawing on your passion. So the stuff we were just talking about. Um, then you've got the thing the world needs. That's more of like a mission based question. So what does the world actually need you to deliver? The thing you can get paid to do. That's a bit of a practical question. Like, how can you actually earn a salary? Um, and the thing that you're good at. So, yeah, the thing you're good at, um, that kind of draws on like natural skills and abilities. So you, there might be a little bit of work involved in figuring out like, what am I really naturally good at? Like, what am I better at other people at? Sometimes those skills only become clear once you get into the workplace, by the way. So if you are at uni and you're like, I actually don't know what I'm good at compared to everyone else, that's probably because everyone else is doing the same thing as you, like you're all just studying in the same way. But once you get into the workplace, because everyone has a slightly different responsibility and like a slightly different role um, or a different way of being a professional, you'll really start to see the skills that you feel are quite natural to you. So whether that's speaking or writing or teaching or doing something more practical, like, um, like construction or something like that whatever your set of skills is like they tend to be a bit more clear when it comes to the working world so don't worry too much if you're like I don't know um and then yeah once you fill out these circles with your ideas you kind of just put all your thoughts within those circles um then you see if there's anything that magically comes into this middle bit and you know creates the overlap or the thing that all of these things meet together um I would say because your life is infinitely more complicated than four circles. Um, you may not have a perfect answer. Um, you might just have a collection of ideas, which is a, also a great place to start. And so I would think that's a success anyway. <laughs> Here is uh, an example that does work quite well, a rare example. Actually not that rare, but like not totally usual. Um, so this one is about music. So you can see at the top, I love like, what, what do you love to do? I love to play music. Um, what does the world need? It needs more art and creativity. Um, what can you get paid to do? You can get paid to teach. And what are you good to do inspiring others to start practicing music? So theoretically, something in the middle of those could be like, you should be a music teacher. That doesn't always work because loving to play music isn't the same as loving to teach it. But, you know, you can be a bit creative and just see what comes up for you. Um, and again, these are ideas that you can think about when you're applying to a grad scheme. So if you've been to other sessions today, see if they're hitting any of these like categories for you. Do you love to do the skills that they've been talking about? Does the world need more of what they've been like talking about or what they've been the skills that they've been um, sharing? Um, can you get paid? Hopefully the answer is yes to that one. Um, and what like what would the inspiration piece be for you? Like what would you be inspiring others to do if you took up? A grad scheme at whatever company so you can put this into your real practical working life um all right let me just pause and see if there's any questions about like a key guy there's loads and loads of books on this by the way so if you have um like if you go into a bookshop and there's a whole section on this concept these days it's a lot more than this as well it's kind of more like a lifestyle idea um but this is quite a nice way to play around with it um is there anything I wish I'd known earlier? And if so, what? Yes, well, many things, <laughs> but um, mainly that all of this doesn't need to be um, like a correct or incorrect process. So I think when I started to try and find my sense of purpose, I really thought, oh, I'm gonna get there or maybe I'm not gonna get there and then I'm just gonna be, I failed at finding my sense of purpose. And I think if you're studying at uni at the moment or if you've like studied, you know, if you've been through college or A-levels or whatever, or GCSEs, um, you'll be really familiar with this academic idea of like, this is correct, this is an A star, <laughs> this is a first, this is a um, like fail or whatever. Um, but finding purpose, well, really life in general and finding purpose doesn't really fit that template so there's no real sense of like oh I've achieved my purpose and now I'm just going to like sit back and enjoy <laughs> the rest of my life um because you're always like evolving and life is always bringing you more things to think about um at the same time there's no sense of failure so I don't think you can ever say I tried and I just couldn't find it because all of the work that you do on the journey to finding it is the work of finding your purpose if that makes sense um so if you're not sure what your purpose is like you know, you just keep exploring and then, you know, maybe your purpose is just like the process to finding it. Like you can find purpose in 
you know, all of these questions as well as the answers to the questions, if that makes sense. So I wish I had known that it wasn't actually that high stakes. Like it's not such a stressful process. It's just, you know, you figuring out what you want to do with your time in your life. Um, would a vision board be helpful? Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely, if that works for you. If you're a very visual person, it can really help to have some like ideas of what you're working towards. Um, so yeah, you can make a really, you could make a board that was all like, like a Pinterest board of um, like around your mission, like with images, or you could do like a more traditional vision board exercise where you're kind of like setting one out, like making your own. That would be quite cool actually. I've never been asked that before, but I imagine the answer is yes. <laughs> um, again, like all of this stuff is kind of just like, it's gotta be applied in the way that really works for your life. Um, so you gotta see like, is this what I want? And then, yeah. Uh, do I think purpose and passions are the same or no different or should they be the same? Yeah, um, I think it just depends on your interpretation. Like all of these things are, and that was why I was using those definitions because those are the, just the definitions that I picked, but you and me and everyone else on this call will probably have different senses of what purpose means to them. And so I think, again, it's a real personal journey. Like if you think they should be different, like if you have more passions and just one purpose, then perfect, like that's great. Um, on the other hand, if you think like your passions are your purpose and your purpose is your passions, like, yes. Um, what I would say about passions is they tend to be a bit more light. You know, they're kind of just like, I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about like getting an early night. I am quite passionate about like having enough sleep. Um, but you can be passionate about like watching Netflix or whatever. Um, I don't know if you would say that was your purpose. I guess you could. Again, like I was saying, it wouldn't be wrong. Um, but your purpose might just be a bit deeper than your passions in some cases. But see what you think. Um, I have a feeling that might actually be it. Oh, okay, now, now I'm gonna talk about careers. <laughs> I didn't know when this ended, um, this slide deck. Um, what gets in your way? So here are all the obstacles of life that attempt to get in your way of finding your sense of purpose. Um, so time, just not having enough time. This is the thing of like getting your first graduate scheme or going into the world of work for the first time. Um, it can seem so overwhelming that you might just think for a while, I actually don't have any time in my life at all to think about like, you know, what to have for lunch, let alone what my purpose is. I would say in that case, don't worry about it. Like these questions are always there for you. The real benefit of having them early on in the back of your mind is that you can just carry these through your career now. So they become like a little tool that you have in your toolkit um, that you can just take with you and think, you know, when do I want to reflect on this? Maybe a year later when I've done my grad scheme or maybe over the summer holidays when I get a proper break. I wouldn't force yourself to do it because, you know, if it's not enjoyable, it's not going to serve you. Um, so it's just something to think about, like, you know, and have these ideas, maybe do a little bit of work before you start your grad scheme or before you go into the world of work on, you know, what you care about, what your values are, if you have a mission statement, and then just, you know, see how it fits into your life after that. Um, money, yeah. This is like sometimes you have to work a career that doesn't really align with your sense of purpose um, because you have bills to pay or like cost of living crisis and, you know, you need to rent a flat or whatever. And I think, again, just be gentle with yourself when you're coming to say like, oh, this doesn't align with my purpose, but I really need this job. Purpose is such a like a lifelong uh, exploration that you can work jobs that don't really fulfill like a specific purpose if you need to, like for financial reasons, like if that's what works practically. Um, and you can see it as, you know, the job is fulfilling a very practical purpose, which is to help you live, <laughs> uh, um, you know, or live well or whatever, you know, whatever it is for you. Um, and then later you can think, you know, if you're in a more stable position later, then you can think, you know, where else can I find a sense of purpose? Or you can think, okay, I have my job. And then what am I gonna do outside of my job that actually delivers like my passions and my purpose and my values, like a little outside of that. So that's one way to think about it. Um, relationships, yeah, expectations. Sometimes we feel like, oh, our parents went to medical school or like our parents were entrepreneurs. So like we kind of have to like, that's how I felt a little bit anyway. Like my parents did one career. So I thought, oh, maybe I'm doing, gonna go and do that as well. Um, and it just wasn't the case for me in the end, like I sort of went my own way and there's where I found a better sense of purpose there. But for you, like, you know, again, I would say, don't be too hard on yourself. All of this stuff is like, just things to be aware of, like the expectations of others or social pressures to do a certain career or go in a certain way. And, you know, I think staying really aligned to like yourself and what you care about, is just gonna be 
a tool in the background to give you some grounding. Um, it's self-doubt, failure and challenges. <laughs> That's a very optimistic way to end the list. But yeah, it comes back to that sen sense of resilience again, like um, purpose, having a sense of purpose can really give you a lot of fuel to get through these like more difficult times, self-doubt, failure, challenges, all of that stuff. Um, okay, so I think actually this might be the end of my slides. Um, but if you do have any questions at all, um, I'm gonna stay for another like five or so minutes. Oh, this is my book um, that I wrote, The Purpose Handbook. And this has all of the exercises that we just did, um, plus like seven or so more. So if you wanna get a copy of it, um, I think it's, well, it's on Amazon and small booksellers if you prefer that um, option. But yeah, other, you can get it on audiobook or anything. Um, and yeah, if you wanna connect with me or ask me any other questions kind of outside of this framework, um, my name is Eloise Skinner. And if you put that into, <laughs> I don't know why I just posted my name in it. I literally said my name above it. Um, if you put that into Instagram, Google, you'll find my website, you put it into LinkedIn, you should find my LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, come and connect. And if you have any questions at all, um, like ask me whenever you like. And yeah, what I would say in final words for you guys is um, like, it's a really exciting and interesting time when you're starting your career. And I know it can feel really stressful. And I think I spent a lot of my early career just being like immensely stressed about everything. And I think, you know, on that question of like, what do you wish you'd known? Um, I wish I'd seen it as more like an exciting opportunity to really try and define my life and like to figure out what I wanted to do with my time and to see it more as an opportunity to be like, okay, I'm going to make this decision and this decision. And even though there are setbacks and job rejections and assessment centers and all of this difficult stuff, um, it still is the journey of figuring out what you want to do with your life. And I think that can be like a really exciting um, opportunity or an exciting path for you to walk. It's a really good time a good time to be thinking about these questions. Um, so I'm really glad you joined. And I hope that was helpful. I think I went quite fast through it all normally. I like have a little more um, time for, oh, that was a bit too bright. Um, and normally a little bit more time to do the exercise. But let me know if you have any questions in the chat. And yeah, thank you so much for coming. I hope it was helpful. <laughs> I'm just gonna give the chat a second. The chat's a little delayed, by the way. So, um, you know, when you're like writing to presenters or anyone during the sessions, like they don't see it for a couple of minutes. So it's always a bit like, is anyone out there? <laughs> um, oh, thank you. And yeah, I'm back all week hosting sessions. So maybe you'll see me around and your task, if you choose to accept it, is to go to these sessions and figure out, maybe even ask the presenters. If I'm hosting a session and I see you ask a question about purpose, I'm gonna be extremely proud from my from my little Zoom um, corner, from my camera. Um, but yeah, you can ask them like, what was your purpose, you know, coming to this career? What's the company mission statement? Ask them what their values are. And um, really get to know the company and the people within them. And these questions are a really, really good place to start. So we'll try and get you the slides if you want them. Um, if not, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'll send them to you directly. And yeah, thank you so much for coming. I was so nice to chat to you guys. I wish I could actually like properly speak to you, but hopefully see you around um, in the rest of uh, National Graduate Week. Um, and thank you so much. Have a lovely evening.